All right, everybody, I got another video for you. In this video here, we are gonna talk about how the father was in the son, but that don't mean that the son is the father. Not only that, we also gonna talk about how the father is also in us. All right, so we got to break down these scriptures because a lot of people still just don't understand and they, um, because they've been taught wrong. They've been taught that Jesus Christ is the father, but yet we're going to go to some scripture and we're going to see what the scriptures say. All right, so follow me. All right, so now we're going to get our start here in a certain passage of scripture where people think that Jesus is saying he is the father. All right, we got to start in John chapter 14 because this is a passage of scripture that many people get wrong because of the way Jesus is talking, but they don't follow up with the rest of what Jesus is saying to get that understanding. All right, so let's go to John chapter 14. We're going to start reading at verse number six. Jesus, understand here, is talking to Thomas. He's talking to his disciple. He says, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So now understand, Jesus put a differentiation between him and the Father. He says, hey, I'm the way. Ain't no man going to the Father but by me. So you got to come through me to get to the Father. Now, that's, that's important that you understand what Jesus is saying. Now, look at verse 7. This is what he follow up and say. If ye had known me, who is me? Talking about Jesus, the Son of God. If you had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth, ye know him and have seen him. See, people will say right there, Jesus is saying that he is the Father. He is the Father. But look at what Jesus said. He says, if you had known me, who is me, the Son of God. So if you had known the Son of God, you should have known my father also. So if you know the son, he's saying you should know the father. But does that mean that the father is the son? That's not what they're saying. Jesus is letting Thomas know that if you had known me, you would have known my father also. And he's going to explain why. Let's, I don't want to give it away. Let's let Jesus give it away. All right. So he say, and from henceforth, ye know him and have seen him. So now, what Jesus is saying, by knowing him, you know the Father. But that don't mean he is the Father. He's going to explain. Let's let Jesus talk. All right. So verse 8, Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. See, now, if Thomas thought that Jesus was the Father, he would have said, Lord, show us the Father, and it suffice it us. See, even Thomas knew himself. All right? Now, let's keep going. Now, look how Jesus responded. Jesus said unto him. Now, notice, after he said, now, Jesus had just said, and from henceforth, ye know him and have seen him. Now, Jesus said, you've seen him. <laughs> That right there will mess y'all head up if you don't know what he's saying. That'll mess you up. And you will say, I don't know what I'm talking about. But let's keep reading now. Let's listen to Jesus. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father. And it suffice. And now Jesus just said, And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Then Philip responded and said, Lord, show us the Father. But Jesus said, you've seen him. But Thomas said, Lord, show us the Father. And it suffices us. But let's keep reading. Let's see what Jesus say. Jesus said unto him, have I been so long time with you and ye has not known me, Philip? See, people say, see, see right there, right there. He said, he the father. Have I been so long time with you? You have not known me, Philip. No, that ain't what Jesus said. Let's keep reading now. Let's keep reading. All right. So Jesus said unto him, verse nine, 
Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that had seen me had seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? So, now, Jesus is saying, I've been, a long, I've been a long time with you and you ain't known me. That don't mean that he's saying I'm the father. He's saying you don't know me. You don't know what I'm about. You don't know where I'm from. You don't know who's in me. You don't know what I've been doing among you. That's what Jesus is saying. So he's saying, he that had seen me. So he that seen me. Jesus say, if you seen me, you have seen the father. And so how can you say, show us the father? So I know that had to mess him up. Someone's like, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. The father is in heaven. You told us back in John chapter four that Jesus is, a, that the father is a spirit. So how are you saying now, Lord, that if, I, if, that if we seen you, the son of God, that we have seen the father? And he about to explain how. Let Jesus talk. Jesus saying he responded by saying, well, he continued to say, after he said, how sayest thou then show us the Father? Jesus went on to say, believest not, believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? So now he's explaining, like, don't you believe now, I just told you that I meant that if you have seen me, you have seen the father. Now he say, don't you believe that I'm in the father and the father is in me? See, I'm in the father. Why? I'm the word of the father. I'm the word of God. This is me, the word of God. And the word of God is the son of God. That's the only begotten of the father. So I'm in the father because I came out from the father. I'm in the bosom of the father. Okay. And look, and he also say that the father is in me. So the father is in me. He's in me, y'all. So this is how you have seen the father because I'm in him and he's in me. And look what else he's saying. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. But the father that dwelleth in me, he do the works. So now Jesus is saying, look, even the words that I'm speaking to you, these words is not my words. These words come from the father that's, that dwells in me. See, the Father is in me, and the words that I speak, these are the words of the Father. And, and look, he, he also say, but the Father that dwell in me, he doeth the works. So the Father is in his Son. And it's the Father that do the works through his Son. Now he says, verily, verily, that means truly, truly, I say unto you. He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. So for those who believe in him, in the Son of God, Jesus says that if you believe in me, the works that I do, he says, he shall do. That he said, you're going to be able to do those works. And also, he says, and greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my Father. Because I go unto my father. So those who believe in me. Jesus say, if you believe in me, the works that I do, you're going to be able to do. Why? Because I'm going to my father. I'm going unto my father. So. So just like the father was in the son. Speaking and doing the works. Jesus say, hey. The same works that I've been doing and even greater works you're going to be able to do. Now, ask yourself this. Does that mean that I'm going to become, that we're going to become the father? Because we're going to be able to do the works 
that the son do? No, that don't mean that we would never be God the father. So knowing we would never be God the father, how can, the fa how can we perform these works? It's because the father is going to be in us. The father dwells in us through and by the Holy Spirit because the spirit is the Lord. OK, so and just because Jesus said that the father was in him, that don't mean that he is the father, because how can we have the father? I mean, how can we be the father? Just because the father is doing works. So just because we do works that don't make us the father and just because Jesus did works that don't make him the father. But the father was in dwelling in him and the son was doing the works why because the father was doing the works through him but that don't make him the father just like i'm about to show you now the father works in us that got the spirit of god but that don't mean we are the father let's let the scripture talk let's let the scripture talk now Let's look at verse 23. Jesus said, he that loved me. No, no, I'm sorry, I was at 24. Verse 23, Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my words. He will keep my words. You will keep the son of God's words. And his words, we learn, is the father's words. So the father put his word in the son and the son gave it to us. And he said, if we keep that, he says, he says, and my father will love him. And we, and we, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. So if you keep Jesus words, the father going to love you. He going to love you. And he says, and we will come in and we're going to make our abode with him. So the father and his son is going to abide in us if we keep his words. Now, I was talking about how Jesus says, how um, he says that the works that he do and greater works than he did, he said we will do. Now, how are we going to do them works? By our own power? No, we can never do the work of God without God being in us. Okay? So, let's look at Philippians chapter 2. Because it's not us that do the works, even though it's coming through and by us. But understand this. Jesus was the same way. The Father did the works by his Son. He did them through his Son. All right. Just like he works through us. All right. So Philippians chapter two, verse three, said this. Mm, that's not the right scripture. Hold on. Philippians two. Thirteen two thirteen. It says, for it is God which worketh in you. Both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So it's God that works in in you to will and to do of what it say his good pleasure of his good pleasure so it's God that works in us so now understand this when we say God works in us that lets you know that it's not us doing the work all right Jesus said the same thing that's the same thing Jesus was saying the same thing he said it's not me but it's my father all right. But that don't make him the father, just like it don't make us the father because God working in us. See, the problem is many people were taught wrong. You were taught wrong by people who didn't understand the scripture and they preached it because they had a platform. They preached it because they called themselves apostles and they preached it because they had somewhat a renowned name. And so they preached it with confidence. They preached it with no fear. And they preached it sounding like they were telling the truth and yet men received it 
and they didn't study to show themselves to prove. They weren't like the Bereans who were more noble than those in Thessalonica because they searched the scripture to see if those things were so that Paul and Silas said. And so many people are not Bereans. You're not. You just a person that don't search the scriptures. You believe everything your pastor say. Now let's continue back to the lesson. Okay? Because we got to understand scripture. So it's God that works in us. And now understand this. Let's go to Colossians real quick. Because remember Jesus said it was the father in him that do the work. Now when you go to Colossians chapter 2. Understand this. Many works Jesus was able to do. But when you look at Colossians chapter 2. And you look at. Um, uh, let me see what scripture I'm looking for here. Uh, what my scripture? The scripture says here. In Colossians 2. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. That's the problem. I'm in the wrong chapter. Look, okay. So Colossians 2, verse 9. The scripture says, for in him, that's in Christ. You look at verse 7. When you look at verse 8, it's talking about Christ. All right? Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Okay? For in him. Talking about Christ, for in Christ dwell it all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So Christ had all of the fullness of uh, of God in him. He had all the fullness of God in him. Now look at Colossians 1:19. It says, For it pleased the Father, for it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. So it was to God's pleasure. God was pleased that all of his fullness would dwell in his son. All right? So that the scripture is speaking to you, letting you know that it pleased God, that he would put all his fullness in his son. And that don't make the son the father. It pleased the father that all his fullness would dwell in his son. And who is his son? Christ. So Christ is the one that was born from Mary. Read Matthew 1 16 of whom was born Christ. Acts 2 36. God made him both Lord and Christ. So the scripture is putting a differentiation between the father and Christ because it pleased the father that in Christ would dwell all his fullness. All right. So let's continue. Now that same Christ, that same Lord, let's look at what he said. Because I want to show you. Now remember, the scripture says that God worketh in us. Let's look at John chapter 5. Because that same son that had the fullness of the Godhead in him bodily. Let's look at what he said. Okay? Because he speak the words of God. So I believe him over any man today. So John 5 Let's look at verse number 19. Jesus said, then answered Jesus and said unto them, verily, verily. That means truly, truly. He said it twice. He said, truly, truly, I say unto you, the son of man can do nothing of himself. But what he see at the father do. So the son of man said, hey, I can't do none of myself. I can't do none of myself, but what I see the father do. For what things soever he do it, these things also do with the son likewise. So he's saying that, hey, the son, I can't do none of myself, but I do what I see my father do. And he say that whatever the father do, I can do. I can do the same thing my father do likewise. He says, when look at verse 20, he's going to explain why. For the father loveth the son and show him all things that himself do it. See, the father loved his son so much that he showed him everything he do. The father showed his son everything that he do, and he will show him greater works than these that ye may marvel. All right? So, the father loved his son, 
And the son do what the father do. All right. That's why the son is able because the father was pleased to put all his fullness in his son. Now, let's look at John 10. I want to look at uh, verse 18. John 10, 18 says this. Jesus said this. Well, verse 17, therefore do my father love me because I lay down my life. See, the father loves me because, talking about the son, the father loves me because I lay down my life that I might take it again. So look at the power and authority he say he have to lay, to lay down his life and take it again. He says, no man take it from me, but I, I lay it down of myself. I have power. See, that's what I want to focus on. Jesus says, I have power. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it in. Where did he get that power from? The fullness of the Godhead being in him. Why? Because it pleased the Father that all his fullness dwells in him. He says, this commandment have I received of my Father. So the Father gave him the ability, the power, the commandment to be able to do everything he was doing. And it pleased God. Why? Because he loved his son. Now, let's look at... Um, now, that same power that Jesus said he have, and I told you to remember that the Father works in us, that God works in us. Let's look at what Jesus did with that power that he was given, and this is how God works in us. Luke 10, let's look at verse 1. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place whether he himself would come. So now the Lord appointed 70 people. 70 people he appointed to go out and do some work. All right. Let's look at um, verse 9. Now look at what he told them to do. Now verse 2 said, Therefore said he unto them. And then I, I just want to let you know. The Lord said to the 70. Look at verse 9 what he tell them. He says, And heal the sick that are therein. And say unto them, the kingdom of God has come nigh unto you. So notice, Jesus tells the 70, after calling them, go heal the sick. How do you think they're able to heal the sick? They was only able to heal the sick through the powers that was given to them. See, Jesus said, I have power. And this commandment I received my father. All right? He got the fullness of the Godhead in him bodily. So he was able to distribute his power to the 70 to the 70 can go out there and they can go heal the sick all right let's look at uh verse 19 he says behold i have given unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you so he said again i have given you power i have given you power all right I have given you power to tread on serpents. So we know that this power comes from the Lord. But does that make the 70 the Lord? Does that make people today the Lord because he gives them power? No, it don't. See, what gives them power is the Lord. But that don't make the 70 the Lord. Just like the father gave his son power. He put all his fullness in his son, but that don't make the son the father because he had power. All right? The father gave it to him out of love. All right? Let's look at um, Mark 16. Now, Jesus is going to talk to his 12 disciples here. Let's look at Mark 16. This Jesus to the 12. Look at what he tell them. Let's look at verse, start at 15. Let's start at 15. All right. And he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. No, he says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. These are the signs. Now, in order to get a sign, you got to have some power. You won't get a sign without power involved. So Jesus said, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. So 
how are you going to cast out a devil without God? I could go, any man without the spirit of God, a man that don't believe, you think he gonna be able to go cast out a devil by the power of by the put like this? You think he gonna be able to go cast out a devil on his own? Come out of him, devil! He ain't gonna. The devil not gonna listen to him. Why? Cause he ain't got no power. Why? Because he ain't got the spirit of God. Why? Cause God ain't in him. So you gotta have God to cast out a devil. And then he say they shall speak with new tongues. Who can give somebody ability to speak new tongues? Read this heavenly language between you and God, or read this different languages. Who can give you that ability? Surely a man can't give you that. He says, they shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. You cannot take up serpents or drink nothing deadly and it don't um deadly and it don't hurt you except by the power of God within you. Remember, Jesus said that the kingdom of God is within you. All right. The Holy Spirit. That's the kingdom of God within you. Starts right there. And he says, and they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Even a doctor cannot lay his hands on you and, and make on a sick person and a person get well and a person be healed and a person recover. No. So you can only lay hands on someone by the power of God. But does that make you God because you were able to do that? No, it does not. That don't make you God. Now, let me finish up here. I want to finish and show you one situation, only one, and there are many. But I want to show you one situation where that power that Jesus just gave to his disciples in uh, Mark 16. Look at this power go to work. Acts chapter 3. Look at, start at verse 1. And Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, which they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fashioning his eyes upon him, with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive some of them. Then Peter said, civil and gold, have I none. I ain't got no money. But such as I have, give I thee. So Peter said, hey, such as I have, I'm going to give to you. What I do got, I ain't got no money. But what I do have, I'm about, I'm going to give it to you. So he say, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. See now. He's going to speak on the name that got power, on the name that got authority in it. So therefore, with the power within him that he said he have, he say, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lift him up and immediately his feet and ankle bones, bones received strength. So does that make Peter God? Because he was able to use the power of God or just because God was working in him because only God can work in a man to bring healing. Only God can make a lame man walk. Only God can raise the dead. That's also something that I missed too. Because I meant to go to that in the book of uh, Matthew chapter 10 real quick. Let's see that real quick. Matthew 10. Um... Look at verse 1. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power. He gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. All right. So Jesus gave his disciples power to heal sickness, to cast out devil. He gave them power against unclean spirits. To cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Look at verse 7. And as ye go, Jesus said, preach, saying the kingdom of God is at hand. Then he say, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely, Jesus says, 
give. So, Jesus gave them power. And that power they were given come from Jesus. The power that Jesus was given come from his father. But that don't make Jesus the father and that don't make the disciples Jesus. All right? So I hope you got an understanding that God is in you, but that don't make you God. God was in Christ. Oh, yeah. Let's go to that one. Let's go to that one real quick. So then after we understand all that, we can get a, a better understanding of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19. And we all know that scripture to say that to wit that God was in Christ. God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Now you can understand what that means. God was in Christ. Christ is the one that was born from Mary, the baby. The one called Jesus. That was Christ and God was in Christ. And God in, in Christ is in us who have the Holy Spirit. I hope you got to understand it. Now, if you're on a video for the first time, repent, turn to Jesus, believe Jesus is the Son of God, and that God raised him from the dead, and you shall be saved. Repent of your sins, live for him. All right? So I'll see you in the next video.